one square ABCD, which has a dimension of 300 by 300 millimeter, is subjected to a loading that deforms the element as shown in the dashed line. We want to know if those deformations that are shown by delta AX, delta BX, delta BY, delta DX, and delta DY, how much would be the magnitude of normal strain and shear strain at corner A after rotating to the NT axis, okay? So let me give you some hints on where to start. We need to determine how much are normal strains and shear strains on the original plane X and Y. And in order to determine those strains, we need to get back to the beginning definition of strains. What is normal strain? Change in the length divided by the initial length, right? So let's look into X component. We want to know how much is the change in the length of the element AB in the X direction. The initial length of that is 300 millimeter. How much did it change after deformation? Point A has moved to A prime by delta AX. Point B has also moved to the right side by delta BX. So how much will be the total change in the length? The difference between these two values. So the delta X is delta BX minus delta AX, which is 0.15. And strain in that direction would be delta X divided by length. All right, so that would be normal strain in that direction, which is 0 0.0005 or 500 micro epsilon. Same is true for strain in the y direction. Point A didn't move upward, but point D has stretched by delta dy. So delta y in that direction is equal to delta dy, which is 0.1 millimeter, divide that by the initial length, which is 300 millimeter, that would give us strain in that direction equal to 0 0.000333 or 333 micro epsilon. All right, these are normal strains. What about shear strains at that point? Shear strain is the change in the angle. For determining shear strain, we need to see how much is the change in the angle at that corner. And following the figure, we can identify two angles, gamma 1 and gamma 2. And we can determine how much is gamma 1 and gamma 2 using those triangles shown in the figure. Tangent of gamma 1 is equal to delta by divided by the initial length. That would be inverse tangent of 0.6 divided by 300. That would give us 0 0.002 radians. For gamma 2, that would be delta dx minus delta ax divided by the initial length. And from that, gamma 2 is going to be 0.7 minus 0.2 divided by 300. Inverse tangent of that would be equal to 0 0.001667 radians. And the total strain at that point would be sum of these two values. Why? Because both of them are showing the change in the angle where they are getting shorter. The angle is getting closer. So in that case, I'm going to add them up, and the total angle would be 0 0.003667 radians. After determining normal and shear strains, the rest is simply plug them into strain transformation equation. Shear strain transformation is epsilon n is epsilon x plus epsilon y over 2 plus epsilon x minus epsilon y over 2 multiplied by cosine of 2 theta plus gamma xy over 2 sine of 2 theta. Epsilon xy and gamma xy were determined. I would just plug in the numbers with the given theta, and that would give me epsilon n equal to 2047 micro epsilon. Same is true for epsilon t. We are going to use epsilon t transformation equation. After plugging in the numbers, we would get epsilon t is equal to negative 1213 micro epsilon. And for shear, we have gamma nt over 2 equal to negative epsilon x minus epsilon y over 2 sine of 2 theta plus gamma xy over 2 cosine of 2 theta. And again, we would plug in the numbers and gamma nt would be equal to 1689 microradians. So strain transformation are having multiple steps. We just need to calculate them one by one and move on to the other parts.